and a voice came to him and said, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything common or unclean. And the voice spoke to him again the second time, What God had cleansed, you must not call common. But God had shown me that I should not call any man, what? Common or unclean. When did God tell Peter, what I, what I have said is clean, you cannot call common? Where was that? That's from the same vision in verses number 12 to verse number 16. Meaning that in verse number 12 to verse number 16, it has nothing to do with food. It has nothing to do with food. Did you guys hear that? It has nothing to do with food. The vision is about the message going from the Jews, which were considered clean people, to the Gentiles, which were considered unclean. Guys, welcome back again. Welcome back. This is Open Drive TV. As we begin, don't forget to hit that like button and that subscribe button as you get in. Look at that tip. What is an abomination? So, um, as we're going to start, let me start by saying this. There are many types of abominations, okay? Not just one. And in most cases, it is God who says, who calls something an abomination. But an abomination does not necessarily mean that it, it is unnatural or that it goes against nature to humans, even though it might be used in that context. Okay? Okay. Let me also mention that not every time God calls something abomination means it is for everybody. It is still an abomination, but sometimes it could be referred to only the it could be used for the people who are who identify themselves as God's people. Okay. Now let's keep on moving. Um, let's start. What is abomination? Uh, it is from the word from the word from the Greek and Hebrew as pronounced to our I think it's to I don't know. Um, and del delugma in which means a detestable or accursed thing or act. Let me just quickly okay. It is a detestable thing or detestable act, a cursed thing or an accursed act. Now I wanted to reiterate that so you guys don't forget. Not every time the Bible mentions the word abomination means it is abomination. And we're going to see that in the future. Sometimes what is used, but actually not. And funny thing is, guys, what I learned on that thing, man, you're going to be surprised. Um, this needs to be clear, okay? You will find instances in the Bible where the word is used, you will find instances in the Bible where the word is used, but it doesn't mean as such. Lastly, if you ask me why, it is because something is an abomination if and only if God says so. Now, because um, and anyone else who says something is an abomination does not mean it is. However, it might be either globally or locally, meaning... I could say something is an abomination, but if what I said is an abomination is not what God says, then it is not it is not an abomination. If I say something is if I say something is an abomination, which is what God said, basically I'm repeating what God said. Okay? Now let's move on. Now, what is con so what is considered an abomination? Well, food. Let's start with food. Um, Leviticus 11, verse 9 to 23. And this is one of the things I mentioned earlier, that sometimes it is referred to an abomination as an abomination to only God's people. 
not the whole world, but God's people. So, verse number 10 says, But in all the seas or in the rivers that do not have fins or scales, all that move in the water or any living thing which is in the water, they are an abomination to you. They shall be an abomination to you. You shall not eat their flesh, but you shall regard their car carcasses as an abomination. Whatever in the water does not have fins and scales, you that shall be an abomination to you. And you shall regard them as abomination. So if he doesn't have fins and scales, if he has fins or scales, and doesn't have both, it's an abomination. Um, whenever, when, when it comes to the bird, God says, um, the eagle, the vulture, the buzzard, the kite, and the falcon after its kind, every raven after, after, after its kind, the ostrich, the short eared owl, the seagull, the hawk, the after its kind, the little owl, the fish owl, the screech owl, the white owl, the jackdaw, the carrion vulture, the stork, the heron after its kind, the hoopoe, and the bat. These are all also. Um, Abomination to God's people. Now, let's keep on reading. Verse number 20. Um, verse number 20. All flying insects that creep on all fours shall be an abomination to you, yet these you may eat of every flying insect that creeps on all fours. Those which have jointed legs above their feet which, with which to leap on the earth. These you may eat the locust after its kind, the destroying locust after its kind, the cricket after its kind, the grasshopper after its kind, but all other flying insects which have four feet shall be an abomination to you. Which means to those who do not claim to be God's people, they can eat whatever they want. But if you claim, but if you claim to be God's people, then you cannot eat whatever you want. Okay, basically that's what it means. Let's keep on going. Um, everything that creep, every creeping thing that creeps on the earth shall be shall be abomination to you. It shall not be eaten. Whatever crawls on its belly, meaning lizard, lizard, snakes, um, crocodile, um, what Komodo dragon, whatever, um, whatever goes on all fours. Or whatever that has many feet among all creeping things that creepeth upon the earth, these shall you shall not eat, for they are an abomination. So basically, you can be eating snakes and crocodiles and alligators and caiman and um, how do you call it? Snakes and lizard, monitor lizard, like you get the point. Okay. So when it comes to food. Yes, food can also be an abomination, but it's only to God's people. Those who actually say they are God's people cannot eat those kind of food either. Now, some might say, well, given your TV, this was only for the Israelites. I'm a Nigerian. I'm a Haitian. I'm a Cuban. I'm a Mexican, Brazilian, Canadian, U.S. citizen, I'm a Russian, I'm a Chinese, uh, Japanese, North Korean, Taiwanese, I'm a, I don't know, Australian. That, that was for the Israelites. And then they might say, also, even your TV, when you look at Peter, God told Peter you could eat any food based on Acts chapter 10. Okay, let's see. Now, God commanded the Israelites, right, the food that they can eat and cannot eat. And I'm, I'm, and I'm saying this is true to this day. There is no such thing as you can eat whatever you want if you are God's people. Now, that doesn't mean um, Satan will not come and tempt you with what, with, what, with, with what you used to eat. But you should do an effort to stop eating what you used to eat if they were uncleaned meat. Okay? Now, 
some will, will say that it was given to Israel only, like I said earlier, and that in Acts chapter 10, God told Peter, it is okay to eat all animals because he said they were now clean. Now, at first I said, I urge you guys to read the whole chapter, but like I know most of us will not read the whole chapter, I'm going to read it with you together. So, Acts chapter 10, it begins like this. There was a man, a certain man in um, Caesarea, I think that's how you pronounce, a name called Cornelius, a centurion of what was called a, the, the Italian regiment, a devout man and one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to the people and prayed to God always. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius. And when he observed him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? So he said to him, Your prayers and your alms have come up for a memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa and send, and send for Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodging with Simon, a tanner whose house is by the sea. He will tell you what you must do. Let's keep on going. When the angel of, when the angel spoke to him, when the angel who spoke to him had departed, Cornelius called two of his household servants and a devout soldier for whom those who waited on him continually. So he had explained all these things to them. He sent them to Joppa. Peter's vision. The next day, as they went on their journey, he drew near the city. Peter went up on the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. Then he became very hungry and wanted to eat, but while they made ready, he fell into a trench and saw heaven open and an object like a great sheep, sheet bound at the four corners, descending to him and led down to the earth. Verse 12. In it, were all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. And a voice came to him and said, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything common or unclean. Why? Because Peter understood that eating all kind of meat was an abomination. You have to eat certain things. Let's keep on moving. And the voice spoke to him again the second time, What God had cleansed, you must not call common. This was done three times, and the object was taken up into heaven again. Now, the problem is, yes, when you read it up to when you read it up to here, up to here, it sounds like God said you can eat anything. You can eat lizard, snakes, jaguar, lion, zebra. Um, coyotes, dog, cats, and everything, right? Falcon, vulture. It would mean that. The problem is, most people that preach that kind of, I would say, lie, they stop right here. They stop at verse number 16. And they do not read the chapter after that. But, by God's grace, today, we are going to read the chapter not the whole chapter, but um, most of it. Let's keep, let's keep on reading. Now, Peter is summoned to Caesarea. Now, while Peter wondered within himself what this vision which he had been, what, which he had seen meant, behold, the men who had been sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. So basically, Peter is, is trying to figure out what that vision meant, what vision in chapter, in verse number 12 to verse number 15, or 16, right? Okay. And they called and asked Simon, whether Simon, whose son was Peter, was lodging there. While Peter thought about the vision, from verse number 12 to verse number 16, the Spirit told him, Behold, three men are seeking you. Arise, therefore, go down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the men who had been sent, to him from Cornelius and said, Yes, I am he whom you seek. For what reason have you come? And they said, Cornelius the centurion, 
a gentleman who feels God in another, in another group of meditation about the nation of the Jews was divinely instructed by the holy angel to summon to you to his house and to hear words from you. Then he invited them in and lodged them. On the next day, Peter went away with them, and some brethren from Joppa accompanied him. Verse number... Now, Peter meets Cornelius. Let's read this one. And the following day, they entered Caesarea. Now Cornelius was waiting for them and had called together his relatives and close friends. As Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter lifted up and said, Stand up, I myself am a man also. And as he talked with them, he went in and found many who had come together. Then he said to them, You know how unlawful it is for a Jewish man to keep company with or go to one another nation. But God had shown me that I should not call any man, what? Common or unclean. What, where, when did God to, tell Peter, what I, what I have said is clean, you cannot call common? Where was that? That's from the same vision in verses number 12 to verse number 16. The same vision he was trying to figure out is the same vision he was talking about in verse number 28, where he got the answer from God. I cannot call any man unclean or common because every man is clean in God's eyes. Meaning, <laughs> meaning that in verse number 12 to verse number 16, it has nothing to do with food. It has nothing to do with food. Did you guys hear that? It has nothing to do with food. The vision is about the message going from the Jews, which were considered clean people, to the Gentiles, which were considered unclean. And God said, what I have said is clean, you cannot call common or unclean, which means the gospel must go to the Gentile because now they are Yes. No, my friend, it wasn't about food. Most pastors, they stop at verse number 16 and they, they would disregard the chapter. And that's why people like to use Acts chapter 10 so many times. I'm like, no. Acts chapter 10 has nothing to do with food. It's about the message going to the Gentiles. Now, um, I'm hoping that um, what I just showed you guys helps you to understand. Please read the whole chapter. That's why I keep saying that in my videos. Read the whole chapter. You can't just read a portion. No, read the whole chapter. You know, read the whole chapter. Even if it's something you grew up knowing. Try to read the whole chapter. You might find out what you've been taught was not truthful at all. Read the whole chapter. Okay? I'm not trying to make that video too much longer. Let me just get it um, get let me just get um, get it quickly with you guys. So to recap, what is an abomination? Okay? Abomination is a detestable and accursed act. And when is something considered an abomination? It is when and only when God says so. Does the term abomination apply to everyone? Yes and no. It can be globally or locally. Now, in this one, it is mostly locally, meaning for only God's people. But later, we're going to find when it is something that is for the whole earth. Anyway, guys, if you like the video, don't forget to hit that like button and the subscribe button. And if you have any more questions, please, you can put it in the comment section down below, and I will be gladly 
to make that will be glad to make another video to give more detail i should say until then guys this is the open video tv hope to see you guys again until then <laughs> bye for now